and the delay here is something going on with the scoreboard. As we look up to the scoreboard where you're supposed to see the five players on the floor, it's not the right people. <laughs> but that's not going to delay the game any further. We are underway with the Aggies winning the opening tip. As long as they get our names right, everything else is fine. Exactly. Shulman without a seat. <laughs> Thank you. Wade Taylor, the fourth preseason SEC player of the year with a beautiful little pocket pass that will send Wildens Levesque to the free throw line. A difficult action to deal with. A little ball screen right around the short corner. And if you help up, that pocket pass is open. Antonio Reeves has to come over from the weak side. A good opening play for Texas A&M to put some pressure on that rim. Levesque, a grad transfer, came from UMass. And you'll see a lot of him. And you'll see a lot of Anderson and Garcia. Both of them are terrific rebounders, specifically offensive rebounders. And that is the big concern for John Calipari, is the rate at which the Aggies get their own misses. Better than 44%, number one in the nation. A 1-2-2, two, two, three-quarter court pressure for Texas A&M, trapping across half court. And it forces a deflection and nearly a turnover. Well, Buzz Williams always has his team playing hard. This like Jess Sims talked about playing with an edge, and Buzz Williams talked about increasing that edge. Your edge is what got you here. In order to stay here and, and elevate, you have to increase that edge. They didn't have it against LSU, but got it back against Auburn. And they're really going to need it against Kentucky. And yeah, they did lose at Auburn, but were much more competitive. It was a one-possession game with two minutes to go before they lost by 11 as D.J. Wagner ties it up for the Wildcats. D.J. Wagner starting to play his best basketball. His last four games is about 14 points a game. He can get downhill in a hurry. Taylor's short on the baseline jumper. He is fourth in the conference in scoring, but he has really struggled to score the ball the last two games, both losses for the Aggies. Well, Taylor, all he has to do is make a couple. He can get his own, but you're going to see Kentucky trying to force him to his left off of every ball screen. That's basically how their defense works. Boy, he is wide open off the screen and buries the three after going 0 for 8 from beyond the arc in the midweek loss to Auburn. Just went to set a little staggered screen. Instead, he came off as the cutter off a little pin down. He was wide open on that action. Now he finds himself defending... Trey Mitchell, a 6'9 forward. It'll be Antonio Reeves lofting the three. Mitchell with the offensive rebound. And Reeves gets a second crack at it and buries it. Uncanny. The, the best time to shoot a three is after the offensive rebound. And because Wade Taylor have to, had to switch off on Trey Mitchell, he was at a disadvantage on the glass, but a really intelligent play by Mitchell to kick it back out for that step-in three. And you see the numbers for Reeves, better than 18 points per game, 42% shooting the three this season. I think he's an NBA player. Antonio Reeves is so good coming off screens, a very good cutter, and he's got a good mid-range game. Henry Coleman the third with a turnaround that'll softly drop in to put the Aggies back on top. What a move by Henry Coleman. You don't see that very often. He needs to be offensive minded in this game. Justin Edwards with a shot fake and a kick. It's Reeves again and it's his second three already. Well, when you're flying to the ball. You can leave players open, but one guy you do not want to leave open is Antonio Reeves. He can, you cannot leave him. And an and-one opportunity at the other end for Tyrese Radford. Tyrese Radford is a lefty. Missed a few games this year with injury. You let him get to that left hand. He can be so dangerous. He's a body seeker. And Wade Taylor, watch him. He's going to pass off here and then go like he's going to set a screen, then come back off the screen. Levesque picks off D.J. Wagner, and he's wide open at the top of the key. That's good action by Texas A&M. And Jay, already two fouls on Aaron Bradshaw, who's been playing great. He is the reigning SEC Freshman of the Week. Ugana Anienso is in. Radford is open and rattles it home. And it's a five-point trip for AM. And that's what AM does. They couldn't grab the rebound, so they tapped it out. Anderson Garcia is really good at that. But that's where the guards have to be more alert for Kentucky. They have to be there to get those tap outs. Mitchell misses the three. Radford in transition. Sixth year player. 
redshirted at Virginia Tech, then played there for two years, now three years here. Deep one for Taylor. Oh, boy! That's his game, Dan. He, gets, he sees one go in, forget it. He can go off on you for 30-plus at 34 against Houston when Texas a was down 21, still came back, had a chance to win. And 35 against Florida Atlantic, but he's going to have to do everything he can just to keep pace with Reeves at the other end. That's his third one already. It's already a shootout in the first four minutes of the first half. Bradford, what a crossover. Hayden Hefner open in the corner. And over the back goes Levesque. When Texas A&M cannot get the ball, kind of like North Carolina has always done, they will tap it back out. But that's where the guards up top have to be alert because if you get that tap out, you can get a run out going the other end. And Wade Taylor has tremendous range, barely six feet tall. But he can get his own good off pick and roll. And when he gets hot, it is hard to cool him down. Reed Shepard and Rob Dillingham both into the game and now for Kentucky. Two stalwarts off the bench, averaging better than 26 points per game between them. Look at that follow tip by Trey Mitchell. Trey Mitchell is having a great year. He's the most indispensable player, in my view, on this Kentucky roster. He's such an outstanding passer. He can guard multiple spots. He can play the five for you. Boy, Taylor feeling it. Comes up empty there. Now the Cats are in transition. Dillingham tough to catch. And he finds on Yenso for the slam that ties it. That's the problem with a bad or questionable shot for Texas A&M is it leads to a runout, and you cannot guard a runout. Shot selection is so important when you play Kentucky because your offense has to help your defense. It has to help your transition defense. And John Calipari looking for big minutes from Onyenso today, especially with Bradshaw on the bench as Radford powers his way to the rim again. The most important thing in ball screen coverage is the ball. And you let Texas A&M get down. Coleman can't be gambling like he did on that last play. And one shot and done. No more wide open looks for Reeves. Yeah, Reeves has hurt them. Thank you. Just three threes already. And you talked about uh, an ill-advised shot is, is almost like starting your opponent's fast break. And you don't want to mess around with Kentucky and let them get out and run. Well, that's the lifeblood of this Kentucky team is transition. And the lifeblood for this Texas A&M team is offensive rebounding. And you got to put a body on everybody because sometimes they'll send four guys to the offensive glass. And that can give you some transition opportunities, but it's a tough decision for Texas A&M. Do they send everybody to the glass and risk not getting back? Or do they send people back and, you know, take away a strength of theirs, which is their offensive board coverage? Yeah, even Radford, who's like a 6'2 and a half guard, he's one of the best rebounding guards in the country. Solomon Washington has that three blocked by Reed Shepard. But he just stays with it and eventually puts it home. Well, Anderson Garcia had turned to rebound. He didn't know that the shot was blocked. It just came right to him. And then Solomon Washington, who is a spectacular athlete, just motored right to the offensive glass. Plays the game and practices with a lot of energy. We saw that yesterday. Washington has missed the last couple of games. Had a hard fall to the court. Hit his head on the court the game before that. Missed two games. Full practice yesterday and in there today. A steal. Texas A&M is switching everything. Kentucky's got to realize it and go to the matchup. Taylor finds Jace Carter, and it's a six-point lead for A&M. Everything has been a switch. Great help there by Wade Taylor the fourth, and that starts some transition to get it to Jace Carter for an easy bus bucket. Yeah, we call these easy baskets, but you have to do something really difficult in order to get an easy basket. And the Texas A&M defense, with their switching and their gap coverage, has been very engaged to start this game. The only mistake they've made is leaving Antonio Reeves too much. Reeves finds Jordan Burks, who just checked into the game, and he is immediately fouled. And the freshman from Decatur, Alabama, will be heading to the line. Good job to break the pressure with a diagonal pass, then getting it to down to the short corner. So Burks at the line, sporadic minutes, up and down to the minutes. 
over the course of the season so far for the freshman. We've got another SEC matchup coming for you here on ESPN right after this one. Arkansas and Florida. Each of these two schools has lost two in a row, and that means they're 0-2 in league play so as competitive as this league is and both of these teams they can be really good but this is a game that you got to imagine jay is going to be played with a lot of urgency down against it well you remember last year this kentucky team started i think 0-2 in sec play when they went on the road to tennessee and they were shorthanded wound up winning the game you know it is early in conference play and whether you're 2-0 and or 0-2 there's a long way to go a full slate of SEC games here on this Saturday. Tennessee, they were in some trouble late and roared back and beat Georgia 85-79. to At Georgia, the Bulldogs had come in having won 10 in a row. A big come from behind a victory for the Bulls. Dillingham, Burks can't lay it in. Here come the Aggies. And that's out of bounds, still belongs to AM. Don Calipari spent the last few days with his team talking about physical rebounding and also making sure that you stay down on shot fakes. Do not allow Texas AM to fuel themselves at the free throw line. Make them make shots over you, which is not their strength. And he's going with his smallest lineup. This is a lineup that he used a lot at the beginning of the season before Aaron Bradshaw and, and Ugana Anienso got healthy with Trey Mitchell playing at the five. And he is more than capable of doing that. But this is a small lineup for Kentucky against a team that can really get on the glass. A strong move by Jace Carter after the ball was knocked away. And now a foul on Carter. Carter transferred in from UIC, Illinois, Chicago, where he's averaged about you know, 16 points, seven rebounds a game, got a lot of steals. For Kentucky, Onyenso back in. Mitchell will get a breather. He rarely comes out. He, he played 40 minutes in their last game. Well, with a Du Fierro out with an injury, he's having to play more minutes. And with those minutes, he's been a double-double machine. And Zvonimir Ivisic, the freshman from Croatia, he's still waiting to hear from the NCAA if and when he might be granted eligibility. One thing Kentucky cannot do in this game is be a jump-shooting team. They still have to attack the paint because that's what Texas a and going to do. They want to get paint touches and put you in a position to foul them. Carter for three. Tip back out. And they had it briefly, but turn it over. Shepard finds Dillingham. Steps through, and that's a goaltending call on Washington. Rob Dillingham is so shifty with the basketball. Unbelievably fast with the ball in his hands. I think if the Kentucky team lined up and had a race from one end to the other, 94 feet, I'm not sure he'd win all those. With the ball in his hands, he's going to win them all. If you're the kind to look at NBA mock drafts, you'll find him. Whoa! Manny Obasiki, who's an unbelievable athlete, just gave you a glimpse. This is being responsible for themselves, and, and, and I'm sure he anticipated this, but he is seeing a group of Aggies, Jay, who have come out here, and they have played hard from the moment this game began. Well, Kentucky has to expect that with every, every opponent they play, that they're going to get everybody's best shot. That's always been the way at a place like Kentucky or North Carolina, UCLA, Duke, Indiana, you name it. You know you're getting everybody's A game. So you watch film, you watch film of how Texas A&M played against LSU or Auburn. Right. And no disrespect to, to those opponents, but Kentucky players have to look at that film and go, that's not what we're going to get. Lane violation just cost Kentucky a point, so it's now the Aggies by eight. Texas A&M blitzing a ball screen out top. Edwards with the corner three, the assist to Dillingham. He's starting to play now. Had 13 points, 7 rebounds, and a couple of steals against Louisville. 
but he was just two of his last 17 from three over an eight game stretch so that was an important important bucket for justin edwards carter's feeling it and hits him and each team has already made four three-pointers in this game now jace carter is only shooting about 20 percent from three on the season Again, three-point shooting, not the strength of the Aggies this year. Just 26% out of 362 Division I programs. They're 355th coming into this game. Is that good? Yeah. It's a good one. crossover. Carter. Shot fake. He'll try it again, but it won't go down. And there's another tip. But Shepard has it. Only to eventually foul Taylor. Well, Shepard didn't come up with it, but he was alert to that tap out and almost wound up taking that the other way. Just knocked it away from Obasaki, but give Wade Taylor credit for not giving up on that play. Wound up picking up the foul on Shepard instead. That's one you don't you don't fault anybody because guys were going after it. Yep. A and M they've had their highs and lows this year. They played a tough non-conference schedule. They have wins over Penn State and Iowa State and some close losses to some good teams, including a six-point loss to Memphis, lost to Florida Atlantic by seven, but overall just nine and six, zero oh and two in league play. They were picked second in the league preseason. Kentucky was picked fourth. Carter and knocked away by Shepard. Dillingham, no look. Wagner, Edwards, Mitchell. What a pass in transition by Dillingham. This is such a good passing Kentucky team. It's remarkable. As young as this team is, they rarely turn the ball over. And they have four different players, each averaging at least three assists per game. Radford gets the offensive rebound. Had to battle one of his own teammates to get it. <laughs> and he's one of the best offensive rebounding guards yeah. in the country. Was in Blacksburg, and he is here as well, as Coleman lost it out of bounds. And just that elbow catch. You want to try to extend that if you can. Watch this pass in transition. Ball gets knocked away by Reed Shepard, and Dillingham brings it right up. That's a beautiful pass and a heck of a catch, too. Wonder if they gave Edwards an assist. He actually just couldn't handle the pass and inadvertently tipped it to Mitchell. That's the one thing where basketball needs to go like hockey. Yeah. The pass that leads to the assist ought to be re rewarded, too. Edwards baseline. Mitchell underneath. Boy, he had a great opportunity with Radford, a much smaller defender on him, but he couldn't finish. Well, he had Radford's arm wrapped around him. Obasiki steps in and lays it in. Sort of a delayed, almost Eurostep type move. Obasiki is 6'4 junior from Allen, Texas. Backs up Wade Taylor, sometimes will play with him. Doesn't shoot it, but does everything else. Dillingham, no. I'm not sure some of these jump shots are exactly what John Calipari wants. Well, he's bringing his best jump shot guy, Reeves, back into the game. He just sent him to the scorer's table. Radford, good defense by Edwards. Nice look ahead by Shepard. Dillingham up and in. That's the transition that you're so afraid of. And the pass ahead, you nailed it, is the key. The ball moves faster in the air than it can on the ground. And Kentucky is well aware of that. And this game kind of to form. Kentucky up 8-2 in fast break points. The Aggies up 6-2 in offensive rebounds. So many guys to the glass. That opens up transition for Kentucky, and they get a layup out of it. Yeah, when you got guys like Dillingham and Wagner coming at you full speed, good luck with that. Well, and that's the choice that Texas A&M has to make. Are you going to put pressure on the rim and keep going to the glass, send four guys, and be at a deficit in transition if you don't get the rebound? And especially when you have Tyrese Radford driving in, you know, your, your defensive balance is not so great. Coleman 
Off the glass and good. Obasaki the assist. Well, that's a tough catch on the short roll, but a nice adjustment by Henry Coleman. Freshman year at Duke, played sparingly. Third year here in College Station. A turnover and transition. Good save. Boy, they're on the glass again, and they got a hand on it, and it's their ball. Radford kept it alive, and it'll belong to the Aggies when we come back. When we come back, into Buzz Will Newborns. He's got you figured out. Well, Buzz Williams is a next level thinker, and he's so, he may be the most engaged coach with his team that I've ever been around. He invests a ton of time in his players off the floor. And, you know, Jeff Sims talked about how he spends, you know, he talks 25 times a day or so with Wade Taylor, the fourth. But he has, he has classes, he teaches classes here at Texas A&M, but he has classes with his team. It's called like Get Better Day, where they'll bring somebody in, teach him how to change a tire, teach him how to do all these different things that are completely unrelated to basketball. And they just have a magnificent culture here at Texas A&M. We talked to him for about 15 minutes yesterday. We didn't talk about basketball at all. Uh, how he has enough time of the day to be a coach and a dad and a voracious reader and, and, and this is mostly because he was blown away by Jess Sims being on our crew. He was in awe of her. And he told us he didn't miss a workout a single day last year. Basketball clinics for special needs children. And you talked about all the letter writing and all the positive messaging. He is very, very much about culture and leadership and being part of a team. He's not just coaching basketball players. He's he's coaching young people up. He's, he's a true father figure to a lot of these players. Well, and you look at his schedule every day and his calendar, it gave me a headache, the stuff he does every day. Just an incredibly disciplined leader. I would have thought he was a cyborg, except he's got a box of Frosted Flakes in the office of himself. So <laughs> but had that, that, that made me feel a little bit better. Hefner has it knocked away. It's great defense by Reed Shepard. Reeves to Wagner. And count the basket. It'll be a goaltending call on Levesque. They can take a look at that because it was called. Which they, if they choose to, they would do at the under four during the timeout. Yeah, I didn't think that was a uh, goaltend at all. I thought that was a good block, honestly. I agree with you. So the points are on the board now. And they'll come off yeah. if they look at it. Yeah, but they won't do that until the under four to keep the game moving. And it's probably a smart way to officiate it. You know, make the call if there's that much doubt. You can go back and check it out. It's almost like we need a replay official that can do that for these guys on the floor. Radford somehow gets all the way to the rim and extends the lead to six. That's been a little bit of a problem for Kentucky is just guarding the ball. And they're letting Tyrese Radford get to that left hand way too easy. Radford's got nine, Carter seven, Taylor six, so Basicki five. Shepard out of bounds. Tyrese Radford is a driver. He's not a shooter. He can make a shot, but he's a, he's not a shooter. And a terrific job by Levesque to shield off on Yenso, the shot blocker, and allow that path to the basket for Radford. Taylor step back three. And he is having a big day so far. Talk about a guy that gets hot quick and stays hot. That's Wade Taylor. How about Wagner? You want to talk about guys who can snake their way through the defense and get it off the glass. Well, that's his game. He's a driver. Downhill driver. He can make shots, but he's not known as a shooter. You want to guard him as a driver. Taylor again. And the rebound to Onienso. Wow, what a move by Reeves. And he knocks it home. If you look at Reeves' numbers, shot the three great last year, even a little better this year. The big difference is not on the three. It's on two-pointers. He shot 43% on twos last year, 62% this year. And that was a tough two. That was a difficult little floater. But when he catches it, he's got that shot credibility. So he just looks at the basket, and the defense reacts. Again kept alive by the combo of Radford and Coleman, but it's knocked out of bounds to Kentucky. I think Coleman probably could have grabbed that ball, but because he wasn't sure, tried to slap it back out. Coleman will sit. Anderson Garcia is in. He is the leading rebounder in the SEC. 
8.7 boards per game for number 11 and white. And the leading offensive rebounder in the country. And nobody coming off the bench can match his yes. rebounding numbers. It's ridiculous. And again, Fierro is out. Bradshaw's been sitting forever with a couple of fouls. Wagner. Yes! Boy, that's one of those where you're going, hey, you want to be taking a challenge shot like that. And he nails it. If he adds that to his game, a reliable three-point shot. How are you going to stay in front of that guy? And he's so good. He guards so hard every play. So impressed with DJ Wagner and his motor. Solomon Washington from the corner. As the Aggies continue to shoot the three ball very well for a team that hasn't done that this year. How about and two of the stars so far in this game, Jay? Antonio Reed. Fight for, for position. Oh, like what, 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 what are you talking about? <laughs> And you guys try to get along. How about the offense for Texas A&M? The last two games against LSU and Auburn, they shot very, very poorly. But look at the numbers today. That's one of the reasons why they've got a lead. And by the way, no goaltending. That play was reviewed, and the two points have come off the board. So it's now 41-34, two points deducted from Kentucky's total. And the problem with that call, that incorrect call being made, was Kentucky got the rebound off that and on Yenso had a layup that was essentially taken away so they lost two points off that but they're going to get it back with Reed Shepard knocking down that shot and getting fouled Shepard who has had a sensational freshman season averaging 12 points better than four rebounds better than four assists per game and he's looking at the real possibility of a four point play considering he's an 87 percent shooter from the line well, Texas A&M trying to get in gaps off the drive and if you over help there, you're closing out to a really good shooter. And Shepard had relocated. And that put Wade Taylor in a tough spot. He wound up fouling it as a result. And a miss for the 87% shooter. Let's check in with Jeff Sims again. Yeah, guys, so with this lineup, we're switching one through five. And with three stops in a row, that's a turkey. And there's a big emphasis. They have gotten zero turkeys. You need turkeys to win here in College Station. They also, if you take a charge, and that's much harder to do than it used to be with the rule changes, you get a pair of socks. Well, that's nice. <laughs> Would that motivate you to take a charge with a 260-pound guy coming down the lane? No. no. <laughs> go in traction or get a pair of socks? I'll go barefoot. <laughs> Mitchell for three. And he knocks it down. Whether it's defense, moving the ball, shooting the ball, rebounding, he does it all for the Wildcats. Well, his last four games, Trey Mitchell is averaging 14 points, 12 rebounds, and he's made seven threes coming into this one. He's just a mature player. Started his career at UMass, wound up at Texas, then West Virginia. It's just a great job by G.J. Wagner of snaking that ball screen and kicking it back out. Jace Carter had fallen down. But Trey Mitchell... Able to stretch the floor at the four spot. And because he's such a good passer, you can play through him. He has seven points, couple of rebounds, and three assists already in this game as Wade Taylor, the fourth, is going to go to the line for the Aggies. It has been a physical game, a hard-fought game with great pace. Both teams making shots. Both teams shooting over 50% in this game. And from three, the Aggies are six for 15, and the Wildcats are seven for 14. I don't think we anticipated shot-making being the story for Texas A&M. It was going to be about their toughness, but they've shown both in this first half. Coleman to back in for Garcia. The Aggies 4 in 13 all time in this rivalry against Kentucky. The Wildcats have won the last four. Wagner, nice kick. Mitchell's open again. And it belongs to AM. Anytime you play against Kentucky, you're not going to hold this team down to 60 points. You're going to have to score to win. Washington with the offensive rebound. They are just relentless on the offensive glass. 
And you have to get it. You, you can't wait for them to get to you. You got to turn around and go find somebody and crack them, or you're going to have no chance. They have eight offensive rebounds to Kentucky's 10 defensive rebounds. So again, getting a very high percentage of their misses came in at better than 44%, as we mentioned earlier, number one in the nation. And this is a half where they haven't missed a ton of shots, and they're still getting a lot of offensive rebounds. Shepard, cross court. Reeves, now Wagner for three. Taylor has it and knocks it over to his teammate, Obasaki. Boy, Shepard can really hound you when you got the ball, can he? Obasaki to Coleman, who left it short. Wagner into the corner for Reeves. Fouled and will head to the line. Boy, Reeves is so good. When he catches it, he catches it ready to shoot. And looks at the basket. He can give a subtle shot fake. And when the defense reacts even a little bit, then he can put it on the deck. And because he's got such a good pull-up game, he's just so dangerous. Reeves having a big first half. First time of the line in this one. We've got another women's college basketball triple header for you tomorrow afternoon. It all starts at 1 Eastern on ESPN. Number 21, Florida State, hosting number 11, Virginia Tech. Then Angel Reese and number 7, LSU, take on Auburn. And we cap it right here in College Station, Tennessee, against Texas A&M. What a fun environment. Been a few years since you and I were down here to to do a game and awfully excited when we found out we were coming down here and again not all the students are back but a lot of them have come back to start the spring semester and it is a very lively crowd the 12th man is in good form here today a stagger action for Texas A&M just to get something going but Kentucky defended it pretty well Hefner open. Tipped, and they've got it again. But then Hefner turns it over. No reason to go for that. And no reason to throw that pass either. Wow, and somehow Burks comes up with it. And Kentucky winds up with a three from Reeves. Boy, it worked out on the broken play. But that could have been a disaster. Lots of time for the Aggies. Taylor is fouled. Before the shot, but it is the seventh team foul, so it'll be one and one for Wade Taylor the fourth. Boy, when Texas A&M corralled that offensive rebound, there was no reason for Hefner to try to make that play. Pull it back out and take the last shot. And because Texas A&M couldn't corral that ball after it was deflected, that led to the open three in the corner for Antonio Reeves. Or just not a good ending to the half for Texas A&M, but excellent for Kentucky. Blake Wait. Taylor, the fourth, the guy didn't come in with a lot of, you know, prospect hype, was not a top 100 guy, as Jess Sims talked about, kind of an undersized point guard at this level, but he has elevated himself uh, to becoming one of the best point guards in the nation. And a guy that spends a lot of time at the free throw line shot about six free throws per game last year almost to that number this year Washington in Hefner out Kentucky's got 7.9 seconds and John Calipari will use the timeout Lost five out of six and found out today as well They will also be without AJ Brown their outstanding wide receiver out with a sprained knee So we'll see what happens between the Eagles and the Bucks. Steelers and the Bills had their game postponed all the weather in the uh, upper Midwest and now into the Northeast to last night and today hope everybody is staying safe that game will now happen Monday afternoon great cut Edwards no tip no and the first half and a fun first half at that Jay comes to uh, an end with Texas A&M leading 46 45 got off to a very high one point lead for the Aggies going to the second half but the big question, Dan, is can Texas A&M keep this up for 40 minutes? And that's what 
Kentucky can do to you with their transition. They can wear you down, get into your legs. In the last five minutes of, a game, of the game, you're a different team. A block by Levesque. Open is Reeves, and it's his fifth three of the game as Kentucky leads. And that's the ninth three of the game. That's about what Kentucky averages, 9-10 a game. And they've got it just in the first possession of this second half. And you get a second chance opportunity and kick it out to an open three-point shooter, that's just deadly because you're thinking about taking it the other way on offense yourself, not about playing more defense. And Aaron Bradshaw, who has barely played in this game, Picked up two quick fouls in the first half. Picks up his third, 28 seconds into the second half. But for, well, it looked like he was going to go. Then it looked like he was going to stay. And now he's going to go. Here comes on Yenzo. It's just a freshman mistake on the head. You, know, you angle Radford out to the corner. And you're trying to protect the basket. And that's an unnecessary foul for a big guy to pick up. Buzz Williams made an early substitution as well. Henry Coleman just came out of the game for the Aggies. Tyrese Radford had a good first half. They need Hefner to make a couple of shots, and that's his first one of the game as they go back on top. Hefner got off to a great start against Auburn, had eight early points, but wound up with only nine in the game. He's a catch-and-shoot guy, but has really worked hard to be able to put it on the deck and be more than just a shooter. Everything they're trying to keep to his side and push down to the baseline, this Aggie defense, want no middle. Edwards elevates into a three. Kentucky now 10 for 19 from three-point range. And that was taken with confidence for a guy, Justin Edwards, that has not been shooting the ball well his last eight games. He's hit two in this game. This is John Calipari's 15th season of coaching the Wildcats. No Kentucky team that he's had has taken as many threes, and no Kentucky team that he has had has made them at the rate they're making them so far this year. Just a hair under 40% coming into the game. Well, the reason they shoot so many is because they make so many. <laughs> you know, John Calipari tells his guys all the time, take the shots yeah. that you make. And they make threes, so he wants them to take them. And that opens up the floor for their drives. It really spreads the defense out. Shepard 54%, Dillingham 44, Reeves 42, just to name a few. Boy, good work by Levesque, but he couldn't finish it. And Buzz Williams, boy, he gets down in his stance. He is yelling at his team to make sure you get back in transition. What a pass. On the end, so challenged by Levesque. Mitchell can't get it to go. Wagner thought about it. Reeves from the corner. Aggie ball. The Texas a and dodged one there. Taylor end-to-end -to, -end to tie the game. He collided with Reeves. Reeves got knocked down. And with the ball still live, Taylor tried to help Reeves back up again. A gentleman. <laughs> you don't see that? Chivalry is not dead, Dan. <laughs> Wagner over Coleman. Taylor came in there. He might get called for the foul, but either way, Wagner's going to the line. Well, Wagner had Coleman on him on a switch, and he was going to cook him. Well, watch how quickly Wade Taylor gets the ball from one end of the floor to the other. Nobody really stops the ball. Antonio Reeves having to backpedal, and he takes advantage of it with a little inside-out shake and getting all the way to the 10. He is a baller. This is his third game against Kentucky. He's a junior, won two years ago, won last year, and he is having to buy far his best game against the Wildcats of the three. He's being guarded by D.J. Wagner, and Wagner is a really tenacious defender. Puts good pressure on the ball. When he switches, he switches up and to deny. Hefner, mid-range. Tipped out. A&M has it. It's amazing how when they can't grab it, they keep it alive, and somebody else is right there. Taylor, again off the glass, again knocked around, and out of bounds to the Wildcats. How much of their offensive rebounding ability is, it's what Buzz Williams emphasizes. A lot of it, yeah. A lot of it. 
you know, it's kind of like with Tom Izzo, Michigan State. You know, that started in the mid to late 90s. They became a, a great offensive rebounding team. And Tom Izzo will say, well, we couldn't make a shot. We had to do something. And, you know, it's just part of the culture. But there's risk associated with it, and that's transition risk. You know, a, a program like Virginia, you know, they send two guys to the offensive class and right. three back because they would rather take away your transition than the chance for an offensive board. But that's the opposite philosophy here. Hefner misses the three, and Adienso brings down the strong rebound for Kentucky. And didn't have inside position on Levesque, just went over the top of him. Reeves open. And it may be a break there for the Aggies the way that Reeves has been shooting the ball. A huge break. You just can't lose him. He's got to be job number one is to find where he is in transition. Hefner puts it on the deck this time. And the senior from Nederland, Texas will be heading to the line. E.J. Wagner so good. He's getting by a quick defender in Wade Taylor the fourth. And he's got that short little floater. And he is really starting to play his best basketball. Over his last three games, just under 15 points a game, 17 of 28 from the field. And that's his third foul, so he has to come out. But here's one of the reasons why Kentucky is so good. They take him out, and they bring guys like Shepard and Dillingham in off the bench. Dillingham instant offense. And Reed Shepard is the most complete player on this team. He and Trey Mitchell. But because he can play point, and he leads him in steals, leading assist guy, their best shooter percentage-wise. There's a lot to like about this Kentucky team. The ceiling is really high for this young group. Ranked sixth in the nation, and if you're a Kentucky fan and really into where your team is ranked, you probably know already four of the five ahead of them lost earlier this week. Now, if they win in this game, they could wind up being number two. Dillingham almost lost it to Obasiki. Now Dillingham for three. And all kinds of contact and bodies flying, and it's going against the Aggies, I believe. A timeout on the floor early in the second half. The Wildcats. A two-day stretch. We've never seen anything quite like that. But your point is correct. Like, it's conference play, and talent is spread around a little bit more now with the portal, with the, the last year of this COVID exception. you got a lot of older players out there, and teams are tougher to beat, especially when you're on the road. Mitchell trying to back down Garcia. The double team comes, and he turns it over. Just a great job by Jace Carter there. He was sitting as a help defender right on that spin by Trey Mitchell and wound up getting the turnover as a result. Really smart play by Carter. Buzz Williams trying to buy a little time with Wade Taylor on the bench. Obasiki at the point. Eight to shoot. Washington drives. Forces it up and it goes. He is a big time athlete. And late clock Kentucky let him get to his right hand for that lane line drive. That's just too easy getting to the basket. The sophomore from New Orleans has tied the game. Well, Kentucky's efficiency has been impressive. 20 field goals, 10 of them threes. How about that rebound? And oh, did they get Washington, I believe. They got Washington as Mitchell's down on the deck. Watch on the opposite side of the basket. Washington just gave a shove to Trey Mitchell. And then just a great drive by Washington on the other end. Kept his eyes on the rim, even through contact to finish that play. But Kentucky, of their 20 field goals, they've got 14 assists, only three turnovers. That's Make it 15 time. assists now. Beautiful feed from Dillingham to Onienso. All of these Kentucky players are good passers. All of them. And willing passers. When you're a good passer, you can be more willing. <laughs> you don't want the bad passer right. being willing. That's a good point. Eli Lawrence short on the three. And it's back over to the Wildcats. And take a look at this inbounds pass. And then Rob Dillingham getting a, a basically a high screen that he's able to turn down. That brings the help over. 
And once the help comes over, Jace Carter, nobody able to recover down for that little drop pass on Yenso. A one, two, two, three quarter court pressure. Wade Taylor, the fourth, back into the game for the Aggies. And what Texas A&M wants to do is keep, once it gets to a side, keep it on that side and keep it out of the middle. Good pass. Shepard passes into the corner to Mitchell, way short. And the tip up and good, I think on Yenzo will get credit. Yeah, it looked like Edwards it got Edwards, it on that, yeah. Yeah, on that second jump. The shot was so short, and usually when you shoot an air ball, the offense has the advantage. What a reverse by Tyrese Radford. Look at the speed. Dillingham, no. Onyenso keeps it alive. What a rebound by Onyenso. He did not have inside position. Just grabbed it over the top. Again, Aaron Bradshaw severely limited today because of foul trouble. Radford is fouled on the floor. Boy, Kentucky, even after a bucket, a great move by Radford. Kentucky just inbounds it so quickly, and they're right down the floor. But that was a big-time rebound by Anienzo. There's no way he should have gotten that, but got it anyway. Six points, seven rebounds now. Productive minutes for Ugana Anienzo as Antonio Reeves is back in. And sometimes by necessity, when... Sometimes player, players need to be needed, and Onyenso has been needed in this game, and he has delivered. They don't win the Florida game without Bradshaw. And Onyenso trying to help Kentucky to a road victory here in this one. Loose ball belongs to the Cats. And that's one of the things you mentioned the Florida game. Kentucky's a resilient team, even though they're young. There's not much panic in this group. What a block! Solomon Washington with a rejection of a three. And is he okay? Looks like he hit his face on the ground. He got his legs taken out from under him. It looked like Dillingham kicked his leg out. Watch this recovery. Yeah, kicked his leg out and took him, took him down. That's not sure that's supposed to be called incidental contact. I thought that was an offensive foul when you kick your leg out. And Buzz Williams is going to take Washington out of the game. They want to have a look at him and make sure, sure he was okay. Remember, he missed the last two games after a hard fall when his head hit the court. He has given them some very energetic minutes in this one. Reeves this time putting it on the deck. Soft touch wow. off the glass. Right over Levesque. That throwback pass was really smart. And a big bucket at the other end for Radford. And smart, smart play, even though he's going to get a delay a game. When Radford hit the deck, Jace Carter had the ball. After it went through the basket, he just held it. That's a good way to slow Kentucky's transition. You, get you might a get a yeah, you get yeah. a delay a game warning, but right. at least you save a bucket. Yep. No jacket for Buzz here in the second half. Pretty good dry cleaning bills. He uh, he works up a lather just like his players do. A year at New Orleans and then really good runs into both Marquette and Virginia Tech. But he's a Texas guy. His fifth year now down here with the Aggies. He was born in Greenville, Texas. Grew up in Van Alstyne. Well, zone look for Texas A&M. And Kentucky made him pay. The corners are open. Taylor no. Kept alive by Garcia. Radford for three. Count it! Well, those are the extra possessions that Texas A&M gets by being relentless on the offensive glass. I think Kentucky can take advantage of the corners here. Deep one for Shepard. And it belongs to AM. Just a little tempo changing defense for the Aggies. Taylor looked like he got a bit of a bump on his way up out of bounds. It still belongs to the Aggies with 11.23 to go. When you get a second shot, if you don't last, been a big difference in Kentucky's pounding of the glass in the second half. How well did you know, Dr. Nason? 
Well, he and I talked quite a bit back in the day. <laughs> Did he recruit you? Over drinks with Raftery. <laughs> Four-point lead, Kentucky. Dan Schulman, Jay Billis, Jess Sims with you here at Reed Arena in College Station, Texas. A fun one between the Wildcats and the Aggies. Kentucky 2-0 and oh in league play. They've won six in a row overall. The Aggies 0-2 oh so far in the SEC. Jace Carter, some good minutes in the first half. Fouled here by Reed Shepard. Shepard's so good at knocking the ball away. He's got great hands and leads this Kentucky team in steals. He's second in the conference over two and a half a game, but just got a little bit too much of the arm on this second swipe. Carter's second team, all Missouri Valley Conference last year at UIC. A season high this year of 14 against DePaul as the seldom seen today, Aaron Bradshaw is back in. Onyenso has given them some uh, very good minutes today. Bradshaw has only played three minutes today because of the three fouls he's picked up. And just to have that big man rotation now with both Onyenso and Bradshaw healthy, Gives John Calipari a lot more options. Antonio Reeves filling it up. He's got 21. Good game for DJ Wagner as well. And the backcourt of Radford and Taylor is combined for 30 for AM. Texas AM continuing to switch everything, but that's going to put him in some spots now with Mitchell being guarded by Taylor. Now he's switched off onto Dillingham. Pass deflected out of bounds. It belongs to AM. Right, and after Anderson Garcia deflected that ball, Reeves thought he could grab it, but instead he wound up knocking it out. And now Solomon of Washington has returned, so good to see that he's all right. He's, he's played very well. Let's check in with Jess Sims. So guys, I'm getting a little hungry over here because the Aggies are obsessed with talking turkeys and that is three defensive stops in a row. They've gotten one so far and the goal is five and that is a defensive feast. Five turkeys in a game, a defensive feast and a happy coach. But uh, tough to get three stops in a row, Jay, against a team as talented offensively as Kentucky. Is. Well, you got to get some socks too. <laughs> Take a charge. Take a charge, win some socks. Aaron Bradshaw, number four. Sometimes you have games like this where nothing goes right. And that's one of the things that Aaron Bradshaw, you know, trying to pick up a really difficult cover in Tyrese Radford because he puts his head down. He's left-handed, driving to his left. He's a body seeker. So Bradshaw out again on Yenso in again. Neither team doing very well at the free throw line today. In fact, both of them at the moment are an even 50%. That, uh, oh, excuse me, Kentucky 4 for 7, AM and now 7 for 14. So they're right at 50. And now under 50 as Radford missed them both. And he comes into the game a 72% free throw shooter on the season. And you wonder, Dan, how much gas does... Texas A&M having the tank if they can't get some buckets. Oh, Washington made a great play to corral the rebound and then just overthrew his buddy Wade Taylor. He worked so hard to get the ball and then pitch it away. It's been a low turnover game overall. Especially considering the pace and the intensity. That's the first turnover this half for the Aggies as we just passed the midway point. And yes, they're just staying in that short corner. Reeves open just for a moment. Misses the three and out of bounds to AM. And And even though Kentucky didn't get that rebound, the Wildcats are pounding the offensive glass. First half, Texas A&M controlled their defensive board. That has not been the case in the second half for the Aggies. I think the, the offensive rebounds in the second half, I think, are 10-4 to 4 in favor of Kentucky. Taylor off to Washington. And a held ball. The possession arrow will keep it at this end of the floor with A&M.
Washington working hard. Anderson Garcia has checked back in now for Jace Carter. They got to run something for Wade Taylor. You ask yourself right now with this lineup, where does Texas A&M go for offense? Being guarded by Antonio Reeves. Radford for three. Another ah. one. What a big shot. Stop on a dime. So Tyrese Radford is 0 for 4 from the free throw line and 3 for 4 from the three point line. Well, quick getting foul. <laughs> Wagner. Oh. There is a foul. The block was up high. The body contact and the foul were down low. That was just really good body seeking by DJ Wagner. Watch how he throws his body into Washington here. And Washington was not square, so he wasn't in what they call legal guarding position. But what a heck of a step back move. Just put the brakes on and allowed DJ Wagner to fly by where he couldn't recover. That's a big time shot by Tyrese Radford. All SEC second team last year. Recruited by Buzz Williams at Virginia Tech, redshirted his first year there, which was Buzz's last year in Blacksburg. Then Buzz came here, started coaching. Radford stayed two more years with the Hokies and is now in his third year reunited with the Buzz down here in College Station. And he has also scored the last 10 for the Aggies. Ball still live. Levesque won't go. Got to get those to go. You get those point blank shots, you got to make them. They continue to switch everything. Wagner on the drive. And a foul away from the ball. On the weak side of the court, I think it's Washington again. It is number three on him, team's fifth. You can see right here, that's Washington. And he's just grabbing on Yenso. And on Yenso wound up uh, falling down. I'm not sure that rose to the level of much beyond incidental contact with the referee right on top of it. Wagner, good defense by Garcia, but Wagner, better offense. Oh, that's just a big-time individual move by D.J. Wagner. He will become the third Wagner to play in the NBA before long. Garcia the tip in at the other end. When Wade Taylor goes to the basket, if a shot blocker comes over and there's no rotation, that's an automatic offensive rebound bucket. Garcia knocks it away! What a play by Anderson Garcia to tie this game. He was like a defensive back reading the eyes of the quarterback. And just shot the gap. A deflection. It's loose. The Aggies have it. Taylor. And now here comes Kentucky with numbers. That starts their break. Wade Taylor with a foul. Wild sequence here at Reed Arena. Anderson Garcia. Said that the last seven minutes comes down to rebounds and rebounds only. So whoever wins the boards wins the game. Well, you can understand why that is his attitude, Jay, with the way that A&M can rebound the basketball. Well, the second half, this has been a different Kentucky team on the glass. On Yentz has been terrific. Great cut by D.J. Wagner. You can't allow the ball to come into the middle on out-of-bounds underneath. You have to send it to the short side of the floor. And Wagner just cut out top. Watch him cut out top like he's going to catch it. And Wade Taylor just fell asleep. But Levesque has to keep that ball from coming into the middle. You don't care if it goes to the short side of the floor. you got to protect the basket. Third on Taylor. Wagner completes the three-point play. And this is as well as I've seen D.J. Wagner play this year. He's been fantastic. On Yensu coming off the, the bench for eight rebounds. Wagner, 18 points, just one turnover in 22 minutes. Radford can't get it off the glass and in. And Mitchell brings it down. Here comes Kentucky again. On Yensu was a presence. 
Mitchell for three. North. Tyrese Radford, he has been vintage Tyrese Radford in this game. 19 points, he's drawn six fouls, five rebounds, four assists. Two more, give him 21. You can talk all you want about keeping him away from that left hand, but kind of like Ginobili when he was with the Spurs, he's going to get there. Good cut. Reeves. Don't know if that was a shot or a pass for on the end zone, but either way, AM can reclaim the lead. Woo. Taylor kind of lost it on the way up. And on the end zone, didn't even have to extend his arm to block that. Tyrese Radford is so strong, the little crossover, and he just gets into the body of DJ Wagner, knocks him back just a bit, and creates that space to get the layup with the left hand. And Radford, he has half the points that. A&M has here in the second half, but again, he's the high score for his team with 21 reads 21 for the Wildcats Taylor the pass A&M on top That little short corner ball screen action off out of bounds underneath is so hard to guard if you step up That's the you're giving up a layup Great fake by Shepard can't get the shot off Good recovery by the Aggies. Shot clock down to 10. Mitchell in deep. Blocked! Levesque got him from behind. Everything is contested. Taylor's going to the free throw line. John Calipari wanting the officials to look at that block and say, hey, why, why didn't you call that? Is it a goal tip? But it wasn't. That, that was right out of his hands. There was no no question that that was taken before it got to the backboard or anything. Now I don't think there was any any inkling that it was over the rim or anything like that. It was just a great block. And again, a new rule this year: if they don't blow the whistle and call it a goaltend in the moment, they cannot go back and look at it later. Here come Carter and Coleman for AM. Washington and Garcia will sit. Buzz Williams has gotten a lot of mileage out of his front foot rotation. You know, that that the rule about going to the monitor for a goaltend call came out of a Kentucky game. Remember LSU yes. Kentucky? A block at the end of the game? That's where that rule came from. Taylor makes them both. Aggies by three. And now it's about defensive stops for Texas A&M at home. Wow. Bird will tie the game. That was cold-blooded. Reed Shepard did not hesitate when he caught that ball. How about this game? Tied at 74, 520 to go. And Wagner doing such a good job trying to stay in front. Tough catch by Carter. Rejected. Mitchell got a piece of it. Dillingham. Oh, what a steal. Taylor picks his pocket. Radford. Tipped. Boy, and had Coleman tipped it back, he had a couple of wide open teammates. They don't pay for it, though, at the other end. Now, I'm not saying that was a bad shot because Reed Shepard can make that. That would have been a momentum three. But it wasn't necessary. And I think John Calipari is telling his teammate, calm down a little bit. You know, we don't have to take that. Tied at 74, 442 to go. Give me that. I turn around, it's John Calipari. He goes, let me take the picture. As he's walking back out onto the court to start the second half, he stops and takes a, a picture. Nobody gets less stressed, I think, during a game than John Calipari. Well, I think he'll receive a bill in the mail for his photography <laughs> services. <laughs> oh, what a move. And what a block by Onyenso. onyenso has been such a presence in this game. His work on the glass, his rim protection. And that's something that was missing early in the season for Kentucky, was having shot blockers, rim protectors. But now with Bradshaw and Onyenso back healthy, Calipari's got that in his bag. Wade Taylor, the fourth, going back to the line. And 
Wade Taylor leads this team in scoring, assists, steals, and just as importantly, free throw attempts. He may be small, but he finds a way to get fouled. Five for six today, 83% on the season. The guy Buzz Williams wants at the line. Next on ESPN, another SEC matchup. Arkansas taking on Florida down in Gainesville, and then at 6 Eastern tonight. The tip, by the way, at 4.10 Eastern for that game. And then at 6 Eastern tonight on the SEC Network, LSU and Auburn. LSU came in here and won last week. And how about Bruce Pearl's team? The Tigers are playing great right now. They have won eight in a row. They beat Arkansas by 32 last week, and then they beat A&M by 11 a few days ago. I think they're top 10 good, yeah, Auburn. They are flying up in the rankings. A&M by two. There's a double team in the ball screen. You can't allow anybody to step through. Wagner stepped through it. Good cut by Dillingham, and this game is tied again. Boy, with allowing Wagner to step through, you get the middle of the paint, and that puts you in rotation. A three for Taylor! Nobody picked him up off the ball screen in transition. Taylor with 21. And now a foul at the other end. Reeves will go to the line. All right, so it's almost like it's no layups allowed. Taylor's got the last seven now for A&M. 17, Eddie House's son, Jalen House, with a 21. The pit is no joke. It's rocking right now, a 19-point lead on number 19, San Diego State. Meantime, Trevin Brazil and Arkansas coming up next. Dan and Jay. Another SEC matchup after this one. Thank you, guys. Here, this has been close the entire game. The biggest lead, actually, A&M was up by 11 at one point late in the first half. Kentucky came back, took the lead. But after that miss by Reeves, the Wildcats still down by two. And the offense has gone through Tyrese Radford and Wade Taylor, both of them with 21. And one turnover between the two of them. 42 points, nine assists, one turnover. That is unbelievable. A nine-to-one assist turnover ratio from your backboard is pretty good. Radford, ooh, another block by Onyenso. That's his fifth of the game. 25 minutes of action, five blocks today for Ugana Anienzo. What a good matchup between D.J. Wagner and Wade Taylor. Lebec the screen, Taylor the three. Got it! Trey Mitchell was right there to help, but the step back and three. What a huge play by Wade Taylor the fourth. Trying to snap Kentucky's six-game winning streak, and they're up five with under three minutes to go. And what a difference one game makes against Auburn. Texas A&M shot 29% in the game. They had 19 turnovers, seven of those from Henry Coleman. And Wade Taylor really struggled, went two of 16. He's got 24 in this one. 11 made threes for A&M in this game. Kentucky's got 12. Onyenso keeps it alive, and a foul. I think they're going to get Levesque. Yep. Onyenso has done such a great job in this game. He didn't have inside position yet again, and still is able to come away with that rebound. He has been a gigantic factor in this game. I mean, that wasn't a blockout. That was a in-the-trenches line of scrimmage block. One and one for Anienzo, who has only been to the line seven times this season. Three for seven. This is his first trip today. He has earned his playing time in this one. I know Aaron Bradshaw has been in foul trouble, but Anienzo has been fantastic. One of two. Bodies flying again. Aggie ball. Well, Kentucky was working that second slot. Mitchell and Edwards trying to cross, and those are difficult blockouts to secure. 
Taylor deflected away. It's loose. Wagner's got it. And a timeout. He called a timeout. Actually, Mitchell came in and called it. Smart play by Trey Mitchell to maintain possession. He, even though Kentucky had the possession. One sub out of the timeout. Rob Dillingham returns for Kentucky. By his standards, he's had a quiet day. He's got six points in 19 minutes today. And John Calipari had both DJ Wagner and Antonio Reeves yep. sitting. Just took Wagner out, put Dillingham in. Reeves was out before the timeout and stays on the bench. Dillingham right into the action, and he knocks down a three. And that's why he was put in the game. The bodies were on the floor. He just rose up over all of them. Look out. Here he comes. Boy, he is energetic at the best of times, and he's got fresh legs right now. Taylor gets free. Hits again. His sixth made three of the game, and he has the last 13 points for the Aggies. Dillingham hits a big one, and Wade Taylor with the immediate answer. Nice look inside, but Mitchell surrounded. Dillingham again. Oh, boy. Boy, what a smart play by Trey Mitchell. Surrounded inside, was able to find Dillingham with that great pass. A minute 20 to go. Taylor. Bradford. What a rebound and put back. That ball's in the air. If you're not laying a body on Tyrese Radford, you know where he's going. They don't get the three the conventional way. Now watch Radford. Reed Shepard was behind him, and he had an easy path to the basket. And Nieto just hits him as he's going up. And Buzz Williams, I think he's happy. <laughs> you can't get that kind of joy in any book, can you? No. What a play by Tyrese Radford. What a game he has had. The two guards now, Taylor and Radford, have combined for 50 points in this game. <laughs> and the free throw line has really hurt Texas A&M. Dillingham oh, knocks down another one. But that's nine straight points yeah. for him. Boy, did John Calipari pick the right time to put that guy back in the game. The microwave doesn't do it. That's old technology. <laughs> Mitchell switches on to Taylor, makes him pick up his dribble, but then a foul. Oh, they got a timeout. One of the officials gave a timeout. Oh, wow. Because Buzz Williams is out calling for a timeout. Coleman, Washington, and then of course Radford and Taylor. Your first shot defense has to be good, but just as important, if not more important, are getting blockouts. Trying to get it to Taylor, Dillingham preventing that. Yeah, just denying him. Radford's going to make a play. The rebound to Garcia. They got a fresh 20. Taylor off balance. Tipped up and in. They're going to wipe it. I'm not sure. It looks like they may be waving it off. Or are they? They, they can look at it. They will look at this. The Kentucky bench was screaming for the Aggies. Very good ball handling group out on the floor for Kentucky. It starts with Dillingham. Gives it up to Wagner who lost it. Radford. And a foul will send him to the line for two. We're just talking about the sure-handed ball handlers for Kentucky. And that wasn't necessarily a forced turnover. 
It was going to try to stay between Dillingham and Radford. Doesn't want Radford to hear anything. Looked like Dillingham was talking to him a little bit. Now Radford at the line. This is where a free throw block out is still a big deal for Kentucky. You got Coleman and Garcia working the second slot. And Dillingham has to be alert if they tip it out, if it's missed. Made them both. No timeouts for Kentucky. Smart move by Buzz Williams to sub there. And now you can set up your defense. Here comes Dillingham. Five seconds. The three. No. Taylor had it. It's loose. No, but a foul is called with a half second to go. Wow. Did they get Radford? Or Washington. Solomon Washington? No, now they've corrected it and changed it to Radford. 23, not 13. Reed Shepard right there for the offensive rebound. Wow. He's going to get all the energy that the fans here in College Station have right now. Trying to make this tough on him. Didn't bother him at all. Big time free throws by Reed Shepard. We're going to have some extra basketball here. One thing Kentucky doesn't want to do, just don't foul. You have imagined if that had gone in. Forty minutes, not enough. Clearly, Texas A&M had enough, and now they got to find five more minutes of it. Nobody has fouled out. The only two players in the game with four fouls are both Wildcats. Aaron Bradshaw, who hasn't played much, hasn't played in a while. He's on the bench. Reed Shepard is the other guy with four. And it belongs to A&M. I believe, or wait a minute, now KB Burdett, one of the officials, oh, it looked like he was making his way over to talk to Pat Adams, but it is Texas A&M ball. Taylor and Radford, 52 between them and 29 of the Aggies' last 35, and there's two more courtesy of Radford. Just a high ball screen, and Levesque did a great job of shielding out on Yensu, so he couldn't come over and block the shot. Dillingham won't go and Levesque down with the rebound for A&M A&M does not have to be in a hurry here Tyrese Radford getting downhill has been huge in this game Taylor for three wide left he has made six of them today but that one wasn't close now take a look at this ball screen coming out top and Radford able to get to that right hand he's lefty that's where they want to force him but because Levesque was able to shield off on Yensu that allowed Radford to get all the way to the 10. Shepard waving off Mitchell Dillingham the crossover got his man in the air now the kick Reeves inside and Garcia the rebound a nice job by Washington to recover and bother that shot what an athlete they play on Radford again and he's going back to the free throw line but when he decides he wants to get somewhere good luck keeping him from getting there he looks like he's a, a running back for Alabama Just gets going downhill and so good with the ball. And he's a, a really good creative finisher around the basket. 27 points, nine rebounds, and four assists in this game. Well, we've talked about Reed Shepard hitting those two free throws. The two that Radford hit were just as big. 
missed his first five today, made the two when it counted the most near the end of regulation. Missed this one. There's one more coming. One for two, three for nine in the game. Aggies by three. Dillingham for three. He got hit. I thought he got hit. Tough shot. Step back three from the wing. Well, Dillingham puts good pressure on the ball as well. Taylor using the screen. Kicks to Radford. And another offensive rebound for the Aggies. This time Levesque. Taylor, the force, won't go. Now Kentucky's got it, and here's Dillingham. Oh, and a block. What a play by Solomon Washington. Boy, he timed that out, too. Shortened his steps. And to do it without fouling. Wagner, the drive. Nope. Tipped around, and it belongs to Taylor and AM. and And a foul on Dillingham. Well, just a smart play by Wade Taylor. Had Dillingham in jail behind him, just put the brakes on and picked up the foul. Boy, a ridiculous block by Solomon Washington. Watch him time his steps out. He was not trying to beat him to the basket. He wanted to wipe that away. And Dillingham took it to the other side of the rim, and still he was able to get up and block it. That's just magnificent defense by Solomon Washington. Came from the ninth ward in New Orleans, Louisiana. Ninth ward was what was hit so hard by Hurricane Katrina. And what a super athletic, above the rim athlete. Taylor extends the lead. Bradshaw and Reeves now into the game for Kentucky. Adienso and Dillingham are out. Five. Washington sits. Jace Carter comes in for the first time in a while. And Buzz Williams is down in a stance again. He is fired up. Well, he has to be impressed with the fight his team has shown. Some great shooters out there for Kentucky. Shepard and Reeves. Mitchell the kick. Tough catch. Wagner. And Mitchell runs it down. Well, how about that pickup that Reed Shepard made off that loose ball? Ten to shoot. And two to go here in overtime. Wagner. Bradshaw from the corner. He can make them, but he doesn't hear. He had a huge three late in the Winnipeg, Florida last week, but can't knock that one down. And right now, Texas A&M is going to slow it down. The clock is their friend. He can take this down. Kentucky hasn't scored a point here in overtime. It's, it's 5 nothing A&M here in overtime. This is a huge possession right now for A&M. Radford off to Levesque. Oh, somehow it won't go. But they've got it back yet again. How did that not go in? That defied physics. Taylor. Kept alive. And they've got it yet again. Levesque doing all the dirty work underneath the basket. Well, here's how offensive rebounding helps win you a game. Just extra possessions. Kentucky's been on defense for the last minute. Less than a minute to go in one of the longest possessions you'll ever see. Radford. Yes! Unreal. Are they... Did they call an offensive foul there? They called an offensive foul. Offensive foul, foul on Radford. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, no. 
for kicking out his legs. Oh, no. That's not right. Wow. An offensive foul. Wow. Tyrese Radford for kicking out his legs on a three-point attempt. And Buzz Williams is living. So the lead still five. And can Kentucky answer here? Shepard fouled on the three. Oh, boy. And Buzz Williams is now past living. Trying to keep, he's trying to keep Wade Taylor calm right now. Well, you have to yeah. give him the opportunity to land. And the question is, was there, there was some some contact, and that's a foul. I'm just still stunned at the other the other end. And again, a great free throw shooter on the line in Shepard. He's got three coming. First point in overtime for Kentucky. Carter in. The question is for whom? Who's coming out? Levesque's coming out. You have to expect Kentucky's going to come with full court pressure and go after the ball. Timeout, John Calipari. That's his last one. What a game. It has been fantastic. <laughs> fantastic. Dillingham back in the game. Shepard is on the bench at the moment. Actually, two. Edwards is in the game as well. So this is his defensive unit he's got out there right now. And on the catch, you have to be prepared for a trap. And you have to be prepared for Kentucky to slap at the ball and go after it. Taylor gets it into Radford and now gets it back. And there's the quick foul by Reeves. I think they would have rather fouled Tyrese Radford on the catch than Absolutely. foul Wade Taylor. I mean, Wade Taylor shoots 83% from the line. That's top 10 in the league. Radford's only 3 for 9 today, although he's made 3 of his last 4. Taylor's 9 for 10 from the line today. I mean, my guess is that's what John Calipari wanted him to do. If Radford catches it, go ahead and foul him. Don't wait till Taylor gets it. Shepard back in, Reeves out. A two-possession game now. Whether Taylor makes or misses this one. And for Kentucky, I think you try to get this to the rim as quickly as you can. If the defense reacts, you kick it out for a three, great. But you don't need a three. Conway makes them both. Dillingham kicks it out. Now Wagner on the drive. Short. And the loose ball bounces to Mitchell, and there's a foul. Well, it looked like Garcia had that ball, then lost it. Yep. And then I think he fouled Mitchell right after Mitchell caught it. Boy, just a bad break there for AM because Garcia definitely appeared to have his hands on it. Now watch Garcia run in. And he has this ball. It's almost like his own guy knocked it away from him. Oh, that's a big miss. 72% on the season. Fifth year senior. Still a two possession game. And again, Radford wants to give it back to Taylor. This is where Buzz Williams wants the basketball. I don't know why they just didn't foul Radford That's right away. Great. Look at all the seconds coming off the clock. And now Garcia is going to shoot them, but about 11 seconds came off the clock, and Radford was the guy who caught it as soon as they inbounded it. And the time was a huge factor in how long it took to put somebody at the line. 
Garcia shoots just under 70% for the season. His first trip there today. But what a response by Texas A&M. They thought they had the game won in regulation. Had to have been heartbroken to go to overtime. And then responded in the most positive way. Eight seconds to go. And thrown out of bounds, and that'll do it. 3.5 to go, A&M ball up by five. What a win for the Aggies. The fifth unranked team to beat a top six team this week.